Hello everyone, Crystal Fisher here. Welcome to another part of my Let's Play of Spyro the Dragon Japanese. Today we are going to Clifftown, believe it or not. Clifftown is Clifftown in Japanese, same names. Uh, you know, same name, but different camera angle, so, you know, it's, it's really, do you really win? Now, here we are. It's been a while since I've done another a, a part of this, sorry. But I'm glad to be back. I'm glad I'll get this out more semi-regularly now, uh, at least once a week, at least. I think even before that. But yeah, I'm glad to be back playing it. Not glad to be doing the camera angle. And one thing that I didn't, I don't think I really properly touched upon it, is it's not just, one other thing that I, I feel like it's definitely changed, is not just the camera angle, look at this, you can't even see what you want to even attack there. Um, but also the turning circle while charging. Now, if you turn around like this, it's pretty good. That's pretty good. I know that we had a username Man Dude, not like Spyro, because of the turning circle, or whatever, like how long it would take to go turn to the other side, even though that's like almost instantaneous. Look. But um, with Spyro Japanese, look at look at like I'm, if I hold down, I'm holding down the left entirely. And like it feels like it really like has to cut around the corner as if it's you're like a race car driver, you know, going on the outside to then go on the inside. Like the turning circle or the charge just doesn't quite feel the same. I could be completely wrong. I'm just misremembering it, but I really don't think I am. So yeah, but Clifftown has awesome music. It has an awesome skybox. It's obviously another dry world. Um, Clifftown being Clifftown Japanese. How how simple is that? Uh, it's got it's, it's a very pink hues, very sort of uh, orange, pink, brown. That's what the second world is sort of defined by. But it's not it's not quite the same as as Dry Canyon. It's sort of like, or yeah, Dry Canyon. It's, it's it it is different. If you know what I mean, like I mean, like the, the sort of the canyons and stuff like that, like that that sort of texture, the rocks or stuff. That's all the same. But just in general, this is well, basically this is more uh, this is more. What's the word? Um, well, it's it's habit it's habitated. Wait, is that the, is that the word? Jesus, wait. It, it, wait, habit habit habit. Shit, I've actually completely forgot. I have not used the word habitat in too many years, and that's exposed me. Um, but yeah, it, you know, it's it's uh, it's occupied by residents, if you know what I mean. While, whereas the other one sort of is almost viewed as like like some kind of. Um, guard, you know, like there's like all those sort of norks around guarding shit. It like it doesn't feel it doesn't feel the same. It doesn't feel like people really live there, you know. I get other than, like I mean, apart from dragons, of course. Uh, dragons sort of they live everywhere. But I, what I mean, like, like this sort of thing is that this is more like residential. You know what I mean? So anyway, here is a dragon. Yes, you're welcome. Um, whatever he may have said. Now this one has what we know as being a big glide, nice little big, well, not little big, a nice big glide there from the top. I remember this this dragon over here that you know rather famously says, "This is the highest point in Clifftown." I'd probably say, "Nani no no gonna die," or something like whatever it would be in Japanese. But uh, it's not. Okay, he's he's a flat out liar. This guy is a, a habitual liar. There you go. That's yeah. Yeah, habitual. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Why am I getting mixed up with the word habitat today? And habitual and habitat, habitated. Fucking, what the hell? It's you know, I pride myself on being pretty good at English. I mean, you know, I'm doing English-related subjects. You know, I don't do maths. You know, maths is shit for me. And yet here I am, like struggling to say some pretty simple word. It's weird. It can happen. Spyro, you can any Japanese fans confirm whether uh, whether he actually said this is the highest point in Clifton? Because, as I said, liar, liar. Dare I say, pants on fire. Even. Alright, so this is quite a massive bit of area here, made all the more slower when you can't... Look, look, and look at, look at the, uh, the fodder in this level, it's bizarre. She really sort of like, completely underrated, no one ever, I don't think I've ever seen anyone talk about them before. They are really cool, they're like sort of like lizard rats thing, it's like, I don't even know. But they are bizarre ink. Playing with knives, okay. So we'll go down here, get our special, we're gonna get a 25 gem, wait. wait. 
Oh, there's a sign, another sign. What, what, what could there be with a sign there? What would it possibly say? Hey, congratulations on finding the sign. Okay, almost glitched it out. Um, yeah, I made it, you know, the text check I made with this made it at night. I, I'd love to be able to play this, this stuff actually at night, but unfortunately the world viewer, uh, I believe, stuff. So actually, I'm going to try something right now, ready? Just one sec. Okay, guys, I may have just figured something out. I actually may be able to change the textures in this. I didn't realize a lot sooner that, yeah, this may actually be possible. I'm going to show you a little secret bonus at the end of the level. It doesn't quite work the same or like as well, I don't think, but, and you can't replace skyboxes and stuff like that, but you can uh, make the sky a different color if you really want. So I'm going to show that as a bonus at the end of uh, this level. Now, how many have we got? 322. We've still got a fair bit to go. There we go, get up here. And by the way, if you, I don't know if you can hear what's going on in the background, but I have the Japanese news. Actually, I think it's going to Arabic news now. I was watching the Japanese news while running on the treadmill. I know it's a little bit bizarre, but I just thought, you know what? Screw it. Might be going to Japan next year, uh, this year, actually. So, you know, going to want to learn all my, all my shit. Now, I love that this is one of the great things here where you can basically do this. Get that. I remember, you know, like, you look at the sign here. It's implied you're meant to go up there yourself and do it. But, hey. Sometimes you can take short when life gives you shortcuts. Short. You know they say when life gives you short cups, make shortbread. I've got no idea why I said short cups. See, my, my English has just been neutered. It's been neutered since, uh, you know, it's because I haven't been doing Let's Plays and I haven't had to really, like, articulate thoughts. Maybe I've just been a real dumb oaf in these last few months, just like, grunts and just like, oh, hello, yes, okay, you know, like, just not even speaking, even though I have been, but, you know, what can you say? Now, anyway, we'll go up here. I believe these are not the final gems. I hope they are, but they're not. They are the final gems, okay. Well, guys, what can I say? When you're wrong, oh shit, wait, I didn't get to show you, the okay, wait one sec, I'm going to show you the secret thing here. Take a look at this, fellows, look at this, we've got a, uh, a sort of a darker version, but as you can see, glitches happen. So, still it's a bit darker than it was, look if I was to you know, keep making it a little bit darker, there we go, it's getting a bit later at night. Yeah, everything, it doesn't quite work, but still, it you know, it looks okay, and everyone's sort of a little bit too illuminated as well. Uh, but yeah, this is pretty cool, isn't it? Pretty, pretty cool. Unfortunately, it just doesn't quite work with Spyro 1, so that is a little bit of a disadvantage. But I hope you enjoyed that little temporary texture hack. Welcome to Ice Cavern, or in other words, I believe it is called Slip Cave. Slip Cave, welcome to Slip Cave. Best music, one of the best music tracks in the game. Just an awesome bass line. Now, we got a little secret area down here. Actually, in all seriousness though, this would be an awesome level to texture hack. My god. Just the potential. It, like, Ice Cavern is just a great level because think about it in the sort of, in the world of, of Spyro 1, right? Think about it in the world of the Peacekeepers, right? So what you've got is you've got all these, you know, dry levels, some desolate dry levels. And then all of a sudden the cavern underground, that's what's icy. That's obviously the implication really, is that, I mean, so, sure, you fly there, but if you assume the worlds are connected quite close, then pretty much what it is is like this, this, this is like the area sort of under, under, this is like basically under a level. Yeah, concha, concha. So, or, or even if it's not the actual level, like think about it, this is some, you know, hidden in the, in the world, right? There's like a level that is, um, yeah, let's say there's a level, oh shit, oh no, I died. Let's say there's a level, you know, above that, you know, but you never play in the game, obviously. This would be what's below it, so, oh, I, I get, oh, I, no, well, I guess, hmm, it's not below it, actually. If you really think about it, it is sort of around it, but it is... It's, it still feels like it's sort of like it has to be in an area that's it has to if, it, if it's in this world you know it has to have some kind of uh, meaning beyond just be, you know like I guess this bit sort of inside saying but yeah I guess this is like in an area where all the temperature didn't hit like I mean I could be you know 
at the end of the day, I'm probably reaching it. They just thought, fuck it, we'll just put an ice level in a dry world. But no, I, I don't think it is quite as simple as that. I think they did sort of like have a thought that, you know, like where there's dry, there will be will be ice in sort of different temperature areas or something like that. But yeah, love the purple goo there. It's, that's awesome, isn't it? From here, I mean, it's not even really moving that much. Almost like you can walk on it. Ew, yucky. But yeah, no, I, like, I really like the purple and blue, and again, like that washed out Spyro 1 feel is, is awesome, I know, it just, it's just really cool. Uh, okay, it's, it's like, it, it's like, it's both like them not, you know, them getting into gaming and like getting into like becoming good at design, stuff like that, but then it's also just like the, the aesthetic of, of, of what they wanted to go for. You know, and just the, and just probably the restrictions at the time as well. You know, like not realizing, oh, you could probably conserve more space by doing this and having more color and using more vertex lighting and stuff. But they all, all the, the first three all follow the same real theory. Although the thing is, the main difference being that you know, Spyro One, yeah, it does feel a little bit different to the the, the next two because of these sort of certain advancements and even advancements of the actual Spyro model becomes a lot better in the in the second and third game. The way he's controlled, of course. No. Spyro 2 Japanese not really counting there because that's sort of shit. Uh, but Paul, is it better than this? Actually, that's a good question. Cool. Thank you very much. That's 28 dragons. Um, okay, let's go down here. Now this is this is where we came from before. So what we do, we pretty much did this level backwards in a way, uh, because pretty much what happens is, yeah, you you get those secret lives that you discover or whatever, and then yeah, this, this level actually this is kind of a, a pretty non-linear level in fact I'd say almost most people do this level non-linear and even if you do try and do it linear there's still an element of it being non-linear um, if you know what I mean like it's, sort of, it's not the best explanation really but yeah slip slip cave ice cavern it's a cool level and not just temperature wise <laughs> sensible chuckle alright oh look Nice yellow. That's something they really master ver vertex lighting. Like these aren't different textures here. Okay, what I mean by these aren't new textures. Like for example, there's not a texture here that's sort of um, yellow and then fades in. This is all basically coloring, basically lighting going on top of it. And that's how games work. You know, you t when you're younger, you probably think like, well, you not that you really think about textures when you're younger. I maybe did a little bit. Um, but when, yeah, when you sort of think about textures, you almost think like, oh yeah, oh my god, they have to make all these different colors, like, all these different backgrounds, like, no, what it is, is the lighting is what defines everything, like, if you look at Spyro without the lighting, you're on the world viewer, check it without lighting, it's actually alarming how basic and shit it looks, uh, I mean, the textures are still great, but the lighting, just what it does for the whole thing, like, you know, shadows, just everything, it's just, ugh, you need it, you need it to survive. There's some bats. I mean, we saw some bats when I was in Brisbane. I was like surprised, like the first time I'd ever seen bats. I was like, what the hell? Didn't even know bats. The only bats you find was a zoo bat. I don't know about you, but he sounds terrified, as if Hannibal Lecter is about to put his head on a spike. Don't know why, just gave me that vibe. There right. we go. And look at that, there's a special key over there. Now, this could be, this could be, I'm gonna load a save state. This could be the dumbest thing I've ever done in my life, but why do I feel like there's just a possibility? Oh my God, I've never done that in my life. Why the hell? You know why? I'll tell you why. Because you just think, go up there, jump down, that's it. But you can do it from there. That makes perfect sense. I don't even need to, I don't need, why was I so scared? I don't even need to load a safe state. I could actually as well do a strategic death, right? Because I got a dragon there, and then I got a dragon coming up over here. Meaning that it, the time it would take me to get back here, I could just die, and then come back. 
So in fact, speedrunners, maybe you can use that as a trick unless you've already got something else mastered. But yeah, see, look, you already warp back and, oh, thank Christ, I got that missing gem there because I would have been looking around for that for 25 minutes to an hour. Would have, would have had a shift, would have a work shift and you know, got someone to play for me and I still wouldn't have found it by the time I finished. Ah, here we go. And look at this, first time seeing thing and, oh, it's open. Boom. I've never, you know, you always see that and then you go, I've got to get the key and it's down there. And this time I'm like, I've already got the key, mother effer. Alright, okay. What else we got? We're going back to the start of the level. Progressively, no, we're getting, we're getting close to the start of the level now. This sounds like one massive sort of circle, basically. That's what's so cool about it. It's just, it's, yeah, exceptionally well designed. Insomniac in only their second game proved just how bloody talented they are. There's a gem there. And I believe this level has, was it, was, did Dry Canyon have three, 400 gems? There's one buff dragon. Jesus Christ. Jesus Christ, love um, yeah, seriously. Okay, yeah, uh, what was I saying? Oh, I was saying something. Yeah, that's what happens. I always forget. What was I talking about? Their second game, smart, uh, Dry Canyon. Yeah, yeah, 400 gems, that's right. This level has, I think, is it 400 as well? I mean, it must be, eh? Question is, though, where did those remaining 20 go? Is it just... Is it just two, uh, two tens? That's my hope. Hopefully it's just two tens. Okay, okay it's not. So it's now it's a, it's a 15. So just keep looking around. It's the camera angles. You're not seeing as much in your view. So you're missing stuff a lot easier. Well, that's the only way I can put it. Oh, here we go. Why, how did I miss that guy? Probably camera angle, eh? 94, which means it's... Uh-oh. This could, this could be a problem. Take care of it. Let's uh, jam and direct. Oh yeah, here we go. I blame, I'm just going to irrationally blame the camera. And that will be a five. We are done. Done, 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 done. We are done. Yeah, that's you know, that song, We Are Done by someone. Oh, my mum used to love that song. Oh, got me to download it off iTunes. I know, right? Speaking of iTunes, Lucha Underground is now on iTunes, so uh, that really did sound like a paid product placement, but it's like my favorite wrestling show on TV, and it's now on, uh, it's now on iTunes America, so very lucky you Americans. Now, here we go, final level, it's Dr. Cool, and with a skybox like that, you certainly have to believe it. Seriously, how, oh, how good is this skybox? So red, so perfect. Man, I really want to use it, but unfortunately with the whole tech shack thing, you can't use Spyro 1 skyboxes in Spyro 2 pretty much, because they're all like slightly bigger in file size or something like that. That's why I noticed. It's, it's bizarre. But yes, this is Dr. Shemp, aka Dr. Cool. And Dr. Cool, this this is a cool level, isn't it? I mean, I'm sorry, that's not even like a reference to the fact that his name is Dr. Cool. The music is brilliant, but like the drums are sort of like offbeat. I don't know how to describe Like, listen, listen. Really, like it's just yeah, it's, it's great. This, this is why people love the Spyro One soundtrack. I can imagine someone like Johnny really liking the soundtrack to this. Ready? So cool. And as I said, what I say, guys, it's a, it's a new teaching concept. I sound like a, a, a primary school teacher. The gaps of silence is okay, especially if you're listening to the music, because my enjoyment of the music should be your enjoyment of the music. That's the way I look at it. That, and again, that did sound very pretentious, like, you should enjoy the arts of music, but it's true, like, the music is so good, and there's no point in not, not hearing any of it, you may as well listen. That's uh, another, because this is a really cool track, a very unique track, very Spyro 1-esque track, even still. <laughs> I want to get his workstation, Copeland's workstation that he uses, so I can make uh, 
so I can, because I really, I really like that, that bass is really cool, and like all these sound effects he uses are all from this thing, it starts with a K, like Kerr Whites or something, I, I actually can't remember the name of it, but yeah. Oh god, so good. That, that, that electric piano is just awesome. Here's Mr. Cool. Dr. Cool, sorry. Not Mr. Cool. Now, notice, look look at how the... I, I, is this a Japanese thing or not? I just can't remember whether you can actually use... Um, whether you can actually, like, run. Like, you can actually, uh, you know, like, move while that... I always remember that you couldn't move. Because it, like, sort of goes into, like, movie cutscene mode with the, the boxes like that. Um, yeah. Oh, shit. Uh-oh. Shit. There we go. Thank you very much, Dr. Cool. You are rich. It was pretty cool, wasn't he? Dr. Shemp, what a bizarre name. So, like, it's an insult. It's an insomniac inside joke, I believe. That's, like, what? What? Like, something like that. I remember, like, I always get the Shemp. It's, like, hidden in the game's code. Or something like that. And that is it. We're done. Now, still, notice, notice, we still have not done a flight level yet. Uh, can you believe it? We will be doing a flight level in about two parts, I believe, um, because we are going to the next world. And it is none other than, well, if I can find it, here we go, none other than the Magic Crafter's Home. So, here we go. Yes, I have collected enough. Thank you very much, K. Oh, oh shit. I said, I said no. I basically said I don't want to go there. I do want to go there. Well, no, wait a minute. Uh-oh. Is this going to be the right world? Oh, God. I think I, f I fucked up. Oh, I know I didn't fuck up. Excellent. This is the world. Okay, guys. Thank you very much for watching. I still don't know Japanese. Uh, and I'm going to keep the camera here because that's a really cool shot. Actually, you know, that's one example where the camera actually looks really awesome in Spyro Japanese. That is a really nice shot. Thank you guys very much. I appreciate you. Um, in the words of Ethan and Ela from H3H3 Productions, Papa John appreciates you, even though we don't get Papa Johns here in Australia. Goodbye.